This is from Uncovered. Suspicious Death of Joseph Smedley. This was September of 2015. Joseph Smedley was attending Indiana University in 2015 when he mysteriously died after sending a strange text message to his sister. Joseph's sister has announced that she has wrapped a project with an investigation discovery to bring attention to her brother's case. In September of 2015, Joseph William Smedley II was a 20-year-old sophomore biochemistry major at Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana, when he disappeared and was later found dead in a lake near the campus. Prior to his death, Joseph was a good student, getting A's and B's. He was interested in a career as a pharmacist and had recently joined Sigma Pi fraternity. Before attending the university, Joseph played trombone and wrestled in high school. He was very close to his older sister, Vivianne. One of his friends described Joseph as someone who sent positive vibes wherever he went and had a number of close friends. She also said he was extremely intelligent and had a great f and was a great friend to have. Joseph's sister Vivian was the one who reported him missing on Octo on, on September 28, 2015. At 4:15 that morning, she received a strange text message from Joseph's phone stating that he loved her and that he was planning to leave the country. The text also said she should not try to contact him, but he would get in touch with her after he was overseas. At first, she thought this was just a joke, but when he didn't respond to her attempts to text him, she got worried and contacted the police. Well, I would almost venture a guess that he was not the person sending those messages. Because this is this is pretty typical for someone who does something to someone else. So they send these text messages or whatever and say, pretend to be the person, pretend to be the victim, and proclaim that they're leaving the country. I've said this many times before. The police will often say it, that these people just up and disappear because they want to start a new life. They just want to go off someplace and be left alone. But people, we all know that that rarely ever happens. We know people right now who are struggling in their lives. We know people who are struggling financially. They're struggling with their health. They're struggling with their relationships. And they don't just up and leave because they know, where am I going to go? Who really has the ability to just leave their life behind and disappear these days? Viv, I love you, but I'm leaving the country. I'm not telling you why. I'm keeping you safe and protected. Please don't try to contact me. It won't, it won't work. I'll contact you once I'm set up overseas. Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. And she says back, ha ha, shut up. When investigators spoke with Joseph's roommates, who were also his frat brothers, the roommates claimed to have last seen him late the night before on the 27th. According to their story, they went to Griffey Lake and Joseph, they all went to try to see a lunar eclipse called the Blood Moon. But due to cloud cover, they couldn't see much and returned home. The roommates said that everyone went to their separate rooms before midnight and that was the last time anyone saw Joseph. A search of his room at the frat house revealed that most of his possessions were still there. His cell phone was missing and there was also a handwritten note with a message similar to the one he had sent his sister stating that he was leaving the country and that his roommate shouldn't try to contact him. The note was signed Smedley which is what his frat brothers called him. And the note, picture of the note here says, had to leave country. Don't try to contact me via cell. It won't work. I will contact you once I'm overseas. 
After seeing the note, Vivienne stated that she didn't think that was Joseph's handwriting. She noted that it appeared to be written by a left-handed person, but Joseph was right-handed. And the note does kind of go down the page in a sideways motion as though someone is writing it with a left hand. It could be someone who isn't left-handed and is simply trying to write the note to throw people off. Joseph was right-handed. It is notable that Joseph did not have a passport at the time, so international travel would have been impossible. In addition, according to Vivienne, it was out of character for him to skip out on responsibilities such as his rent payment and his college studies. So on September, or October the 2nd, 2015, at around 7 p.m., a couple of fishermen find a body in Griffey Lake, which is the place the frat brothers said they went to, to see the uh, eclipse. A body was found approximately three miles north of the campus. The next day, law enforcement confirmed that the body was that of Joseph Smedley. His, his body was found face up in the water and it was in a pool of water around three feet deep. He was floating approximately 10 feet from the shore with more than 60 pounds of rocks in a backpack strapped to his chest. After a brief investigation by police and an autopsy, the Monroe County Coroner ruled that Joseph's cause of death was drowning and that his death was a suicide. A toxicology report showed that Joseph had both THC and alcohol in his system at the time of his death. Alcohol, of course, frat boys, frat brothers are drinking beer and stuff like that. Um, why would he go to the trouble of putting 60 pounds of rocks in a backpack, strapping it to his chest, and then jumping into the water? I, I don't know, but uh, maybe I'm overthinking things here but we're talking about a fraternity that is often protected and I'm going to get into a video that's probably a story rather that's probably going to take several videos to complete I've already started on this and it involves a person who was um sexually assaulted on a college campus and it was pretty much covered up it was pretty much swept under the rug it was hush hush and then later this same person who was accused goes on to do much worse to other women so I'm going to get into that but I just think you know that this is this is sometimes the case when it comes to these colleges they do not want the publicity these frat people, these fraternities, they don't want the bad publicity. So, police do not, at that time, and, and still do not believe that foul play was involved. So, according to police, this was a suicide and the case was closed. However, Vivienne and other loved ones did not and still do not believe that the coroner's determination is accurate. For one thing, Vivienne thought it was odd that Joseph could have drowned in such shallow water because he was a very strong swimmer. She also asserted that it was uncommon for cases in which the victim is a person of color to receive less media coverage and less investigation resources, a factor that could have potentially contributed to how her brother's case was treated. There's also the fact that Joseph's Twitter account profile displays the description. If found dead in police custody, it wasn't suicide. It's unclear when the description was posted or by whom. Did he have a reason to suspect that he might be a target? Or was this merely a coincidence? 
Well, I don't think that it was a coincidence at all. The case is considered closed by law enforcement, but Joseph's family has not given up the fight for answers. The family raised more than $10,000 via GoFundMe to hire an attorney and a private investigator to continue looking into this. Part of their work includes enabling a forensic pathologist hired by the family to complete a second autopsy. His initial findings show hemorrhaging in Joseph's back that did not seem consistent with suicide, but the pathologist cannot finalize his report without more information from police files. So far, the Bloomington Police Department has refused to cooperate. An interesting note about the Sigma Pi fraternity that Joseph pledged, as of April 2021, the chapter has suspended activities at the Indiana University for hazing, endangering others, dishonest conduct, and failure to comply with university and county directives. There's no evidence that Joseph's death had anything to do with his involvement in the fraternity, but with the pattern of disregard for safety by the fraternity chapter. So basically what they're saying is these hazing behaviors, often these um, pledges are made to drink huge amounts of alcohol at one time. Many, some people have died because of this. They are, they, they are, they're put through some brutal, really humiliating activities, and some people don't survive it. So, as of September 2021, there was a $1,000 reward for information leading to the reopening of Joseph's case. There is also an active petition to reopen the case. Anyone with any information regarding Joseph Smedley's death should submit a tip via the Justice for Joseph Facebook page and contact the Bloomington Police Department. There were two witnesses, and of course, the, I'm, I'm assuming they're using fake names, but they say that they were fraternity brothers of Joseph's. And they were the last person to see him alive on the night of the 27th of September. And they don't really go into any details. I guess those two were the two that gave the police the information that they had gone out that night. There's a receipt that says that Joseph had dinner with his friends at Noodles and Company. And there's a receipt for that restaurant. And his roommates mentioned that they went back at, to watch a baseball game and a movie. Well, his roommate's account was that because it was very cloudy at the time, the viewing was uneventful. They then claim that everyone goes back to the house and was in bed by 11.30 p.m. We're talking about frat fraternity brothers here. So that same night, they on his cell phone, there was a text message to a girl, and Joseph had invited this girl to a fraternity party that was taking place that night. Now, did they talk to this girl? Did they get any information from her? Were there other people at this fraternity party that would say something strange or unusual happened? People, will, I'm telling you, you go from high school, you go from being a 16, 17-year-old high school student who's used to getting into trouble when you miss curfew or, you know, get caught up doing something that you're not supposed to, to be and put on your own in a house with a bunch of other people who are all free to come and go and and party and drink and do whatever they want. And these people are the most hush hush people that you could ever meet. It's it's mind blowing how they are able to cover for each other and cover up and how these colleges cover this stuff up. 
Now, I can't say this man very well could have been going through some type of depression. But according to this, he went out to dinner with his friends. According to the receipt, he had invited a girl to a party that night. Something took place from the time that he ate dinner and when this party started. And if they were having a fraternity party that night, why were they all in bed by 11.30, according to them? So this case is considered closed, but I think that everybody can agree, or at least maybe you disagree, but I feel that this was something the police had no intentions of really investigating. Um, it's very possible that something happened at the party that night. Joseph may have been in some of these hazing behaviors. Could something have happened to this young woman at the party and that he was trying to defend her? Did she give the police any information or did the police even go talk to any of these people? It seems to me almost like the police just said, okay, this was suicide, let's go. And that was that. So, I don't know. Thanks for watching.